Hello and welcome to our video. Today's video is going to be two types of videos rolled into one. We're going to talk about restoring old knives. Now if you look right here, this knife right here, and this knife right here, and this right, all these four knives were blued with perma blue liquid gun blowing kits. Okay, um, so basically we're going to talk about this knife right here. This is an old antique machete. All of these are from, these right here are World War II fighting knives. All of them have leather handles and including this one. And we're going to talk about restoring this one. This is what this video is about. And included in this video is going to be a review and a tutorial on how to blue the blade because this blade has not been blued yet. So what we're going to first talk about is this knife right here. When I first got it, from right here to right here, all of the leather bands were missing. See, this is a bunch of leather bands. They kind of look like this. And they're stacked one over the other. Now, I couldn't get this apart or t to detach it to make solid rings because you see the way that it's hammered, riveted on the back. So, what I had to do with this one was it took a regular piece of leather, right, and... I pulled one of the rings off of the handle and I made a template and I cut a bunch of these out of a sheet of leather, out of a piece of leather. So, because it's going to be open on the bottom, because I slid them down over the top, I cut another little strip of leather. You can't see it, but, and put it in the bottom of it in this finger notch to fill the bottom in. So, the first thing he did when I first got this was very rusty. I pulled each one of these strips apart. And I put a bead of glue in there, a uh, tight bond, ultimate waterproof glue in between each one of the bands on the um, handle. Then I pushed all these handle bands together and it left a space right here. I cut a, several of these, probably like seven or eight of them, and slid them down from the top like this, down over top, down into here, one over the other until I was all there and glued them so the next thing he did was wait for the glue to dry once the glue was dry I took a piece of sandpaper rough sandpaper and got a basic shape of the handle and sanded this leather down the next thing I did was take it outside and I soaked it I mean I poured it uh, Minwax resin wood hardened resin made by Minwax on the handle and I let that stuff harden up in there until it hardened up all that leather like a rock because this leather was old and brittle. As soon as I did that, I come back in, I solder with a rough grit sandpaper and work down to a smaller, more finer, higher grit, like a 2400 grit sandpaper. And we took and sanded all this down and conformed it back to what it was supposed to be because it's supposed to have a finger notch where your finger fits in like that. The next thing I did was sand all of the heavy pitting and stuff off of the blade and everything. And get it nice and clean and all that. And the next thing you're going to do is we're going to go through a tutorial on how to take this right here, this perma blue, and do to this blade what we did to this blade right here. So that's going to be included in this video on how to restore an old knife. This knife right here would have been used around World War II and it was used like out in the jungle for clearing vines, for fighting. And you name it. So, and it's seen a lot of abuse, battle, jungles, and who knows what. So, the, basically, I try to restore these knives to try to preserve them so that they can go into the future in the hands of someone else that's going to be the person that um, that possesses them and passes them on. Because we don't really truly ever own an antique. We just take care of it. We just take care of that antique until we pass it on to someone else. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead on and move this video outside and take a tutorial on how to do this bluing. I'm gonna blue all of the blade and the handle, okay? Once we get all of that done, you're gonna let that set and cure overnight for 24 hours. Once that's done, then it'll be in the condition that these knives are, as you can see the bluing on this one, and that blade right there. And the more times that you do it, the darker the blade. Now there's two types of uh, things that people would have put on guns. One was called a browning and one was called a bluing. 
today we're doing the bluing. The browning technique was a much older technique where they would set it out in humidity and clean it off and and and, and oil it and whatnot and everything to, to get a brown finish. This is actually called bluing, but we're going to go for a darker finish on this on this blade right here and then we're going to call it done. So that's, I mean, I wish I could have went on and showed you how I did these. All I can do now is just kind of explain it by showing you the leather because we didn't think about putting that part in the video and it's too late. It actually takes a while to actually get to this, but basically all you're doing is cutting these little rings, gluing these back together nice and tight until it gets hard, replacing these rings and then taking sandpaper and shaping it back down to its, to its shape of the original handle. So now we're going to go outside and we're going to do a review on the Perma Blue liquid gun bluing kit that can be used on knife blades, guns, or anything else, metal or steel that's made out of steel that you would want to preserve. So, Hello and welcome back to our video. Today we're doing a review on Birchwood, Birchwood Kelly Perma Blue liquid gun bluing kit that comes with a rust Blue and rust remover, perma blue, and a cleaner and a degreaser. And what we're going to put blue in on today is this old World War II machete that we've already restored the handle. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this kit apart, look what it includes, and we're going to go through step by step on what it's going to take to put a bluing on the on this handguard and on the blade. This kit comes with gun blue, blue and rust remover, cleaner and degreaser, wet dry sandpaper, barricade and take alongs, bluing dubbers, fine steel wool, a sponge, a service cloth, and instruction guide. So I'm going to go ahead on now and open the kit up and take all the items back out of the kit and set them back down here on, the, on their work table. And what a we're also going to use this. We're going to need to keep, you're going to need some running water. So we're going to get a water hose for that. I'm going to go ahead on and open this up. Like that. I'm going to go ahead on and take out the different pieces that come with the kit. And it comes with a little sponge, some steel wool, some, uh, Looks like some napkins or something to wipe it off with polishing cloth. Just gonna sit that down there. It comes with a barricade rust protection for firearms. And you can use this on guns, knives, whatever you want to use it on. And it comes with these little dabber things for like applying the product. And it comes with an instruction manual and a piece of sandpaper. So I'm gonna go ahead on now and put this stuff down i'm gonna go ahead on and get my water hose ready and then we're gonna go through the steps on what it's gonna take to prepare the blade and get the bluing and pop and put it on there okay in the instructions it says remove old bluing and rust it's if necessary is a necessity before re-bluing or browning okay so it says use the birchwood casey cleaner degreaser and rinse thoroughly with water and always wear gloves during the preparation of bluing process. Now these gloves didn't come with the kit. They were gloves that I had. Okay, so it's cleaning and greasing, degreasing is critical. Do not to cut the corner here. For the best results, use Birchwood Casey Cleaner and Degreaser. If you don't have access to it, ordinary dishwashing soap will work as a substitution. When you think it is clean enough, clean it two more times. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead on and take this little sponge right here. I'm going to get the, uh, the cleaner and the degreaser. Open that up. Put some hole in it. Go ahead on and pour some of that out on our sponge. And wipe our piece down. Wipe our blade down. Clean it really good. Get all the grease and oil, anything on it. Because you got oil on your fingers. You might not think it's oil on it, but you got oil on your fingers and stuff that you don't realize that you have. And it'll build up on the metal and stuff, and it'll mess up your uh, 
project. So because we're doing the hand guard, we're going to do the hand guard. Right. Up underneath to the bottom of it. Don't worry about getting your leather wet. That's all stabilized and everything at this point. And you can always deal with that later. Alright. Now I'm gonna go ahead on and rest it with some water. Now we're resting it down with water. Like I said, we're going to go down and do it two more times. Go down two more times. There's a little piece of what we plan on brewing. Again, go ahead on and rub it down one time. Three times, just like your book says. Now, now we've done it three times, and we're going to go ahead on to the next step. Now we're at step two. Step two says apply Birchwood Casey Blue and, and Rust Remover with a saturated swab and allow it to work for two minutes. With a small pad of steel wool, dampen with blue and rust remover. Polish the metal, lightly remove old blue and loosened rust, and continue this process till the metal is shiny. If the metal suffers from deep scratches or petting, you can sand the areas with fine 280 grit paper, followed by steel wool polish, and a file may be needed for deep pits, rate chemical below. When sanding metal surfaces, wrap the paper around a stiff flat backer like a file. In addition to reducing hand fatigue, it will keep the surfaces of the edges crisp. Whatever you do, don't try to rush the metal preparation. Keep polishing until everything looks right. If you don't, you'll regret it later. Also, don't forget to trigger screw heads or anything else that shows disassemble any multiple part mechanisms or preparation of metal finishing. Reapply the cleaner and degrease the scrub with a sponge and rinse again with cold water. At this point, be careful not to touch the metal as with your fingers can leave telltale marks of bluing caused by natural oils from your hand. So what we're going to do now is going to go ahead on and dip the little swab in here in the blue rust remover. Go ahead on and swab all this down. And let it sit on here for two minutes. Go ahead on to do that part. Look at that stuff foaming. It's getting any little bit of rust or anything that might be left down inside of those little pits. So, I'm going to go ahead on and get every little part really good on both sides of the blade. And it also says, like, for larger projects and stuff, instead of trying to do it all at one time, you might want to do it in stages. This is probably the part that you don't want to get on your hands. It smells kind of acidy or something. I'm not sure what that is, but... Okay. We're going to go ahead on now. I'm going to try to keep it off of the leather as much as I can off the handle. I'm going to go ahead on it get every little piece of the that we're going to blow inside of this hand guard. That's right. Now, we go ahead on and we're going to stop for a minute and let this stuff set on here for two minutes. I'm not going to use all of my steel wool. 
I'm just going to go ahead and pull the piece off. And during that two minutes, I'm going to take the steel wheel and scrub everything really good, getting down on all the pores and stuff like that. Down inside all these little pores and everything where there's rust at with that steel wool. Like that. Getting all the rust and everything off anything that might be left on there. Getting down all the little cracks and seams. That's right. Also getting that hand guard. Back of it. Just gonna keep doing that, man. Alternating back and forth. We'll take and wash this down with the with the cleaner and degreaser on the sponge again. Rinse it off. We'll take a piece of sandpaper and get down in the cracks. Go back and do the same process over and over again for how many, however long it takes to get it ready for the bluing. That's what we're gonna do. So now we got this on here. It looks like it might end up needing a little piece of sandpaper. to get inside this crack right here. So the sandpaper, I'm doing a lot better than that steel wool. It's not doing much. So I'm just going to get down all the little things, get all that, any kind of little rust or anything out of there that might still be standing in there. And this is all this cleaning and preparation is more important than anything because it's what it's going to uh, determine what your end result is going to be. Like that. Now, the next thing I want to do is we'll go ahead on and rinse this off. Yeah. Rub it down again with some more that's cleaner and degreaser. Like that. And do it a couple of times until it's right. Like that. And I rinse it off again. Water, cold water. And I'm going to go ahead on and just repeat these steps a couple of times off camera to, so that the video is not so long. And then when we come back, we'll do the bluing part. All right. Bluing application. Apply virtually Casey Perma Blue Paste or Liquid Gun Blue with an applicator swab over the entire surface to be blued. Work as quickly as possible, but remember to be thorough. Rather than brewing the entire surface at one time, you may want to divide the work into two or three sections, allowing the bluing to stand on the metal for 30 to 60 seconds and no longer. Then neutralize the chemical reaction by rinsing immediately and thoroughly with cold water and wipe dry. Timing is critical when it comes to bluing. For the best results, do not allow the solution to contact the metal surface for longer than one minute. It is better to allow the surface to sit on the metal surface for less time rather than too long. After or during the rinsing or polishing, rinsing after or during rinsing polishing very lightly with a fine steel wool to blend the color if needed if the steel wool is used you must use the cleaner and degreaser again to remove any surface oils that may have been introduced appraise the bluing for coverage if streaking exists or you desire a deeper darker blue simply repeat steps one through three until the desired color is obtained Saturate all areas with Birchwood KC Barricade Rust Protection and allow the new bluing to cure overnight. All right. So now, I'm going to go ahead on. I'm not touching any of the metal, but just the leather handle. And we're going to go ahead on and start putting bluing on. Starting right now, we're going to try to get a 60-second timer. To do it as fast as we can and get it on there. So that you don't have one side darker than the other and all this other crap. All this other shit. I think what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna do the handle first of the blade first and then come back and do the handle second because it'd be it's gonna take me too too much time consumption to try to do it all at one time. Alright, now we're gonna wait 60 seconds. And 
gonna go out on and rinse it. With cold water. Cold flat water. And then we're timing our time at 60 seconds. At 60 seconds, I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to wash it off and we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. All right. Now that we've been rinsed it off, I'm going to take the steel wool and just kind of blend the color a little bit, knocking down any little streaking or anything that might be on there. Now, because I use the steel wool, I'm going to have to repeat this step. I'm going to have to take a little bit of this cleaner and degreaser. Put it on the sponge, clean it off again, and rinse it one more time, dry it off, and then we're going to keep doing this blue until I'm happy with what, I'm, what I've got here. I'm going to go ahead on and rinse this off, and then we'll go back and do it again and again and again. And once I get the blade to where I want it, then we'll resume the video and get to the handguard. Each time repeating all these steps. All right. Now I've then applied the blue one about five times each time smoothing it out with steel wool and cleaning it with the the oil cleaner and um, rinsing it off with water and drying it and then reapplying the bluing until I got the darkness of what I wanted now if you know anything about being back in the war and stuff people didn't want a glare or light flickering on anything that they had that was metallic because it could get you shot so this piece would have been dark back in the 1940s during the war so I've applied about five coats of this until I got to this color right here, which I'm satisfied with. It's rolled up the leather in a little bit on the handle in a couple of places like that, but that's just part of being restoring something. Sometimes you uh, have to go back and touch something up or redo something or whatever, and you learn as you go. Uh, my guess is that once this is all cured, in 24 hours because right now the next step is to apply the barricade rust protection barricade rust protection onto all the metal surfaces that were blue and then we're going to let that set for 24 hours and then that what that'll do while it cures is it'll set everything in like it's supposed to and then after that the blowing part of the procedure will be completed and then they'll do a little bit of work on the handle and polish it up and then it'll be done and uh it would be just as good as it was when it was in there. The birth barricade protection thing comes in a little wipe. Basically, all you're going to do is just wipe it down. Wipe down all the metal and everything like that that you put bluing on. And then you just let, let the piece set for 24 hours and it'll set it all in, you know. This particular piece was heavily rusted. And, uh, I've been actually working on it for a long time. There's a lot of deep pitting in that blade. And with something like that, you can only take so much out of it without jeopardizing the quality and the thickness of the blade. See, there's a medium round that you have to find when you're doing something like that. You need to know when to stop, when it's good enough, is or, you know, good enough meaning that's all you're going to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to go any better than that. You're not going to get any better than that. So... I'm pleased with this piece, and uh, to be quite honest with you, I like this Birchwood Casey uh, blowing kit. It's really simple. So in my review, I'd give it a 10, because 10 for the quality and the simplicity behind it. Anybody could do this. A little, a little kid could do that. It's just basically a couple of small steps, and... Then that's and that's what you get. That's your finished result. If you actually, this looks black in here because of the lighting. If I were to take it outside tomorrow in the light, in the light were to hit it, you'd actually see that it has like a, a slight blue cast to it, and it still, it still, you know, has its metallic quality that shows that it's actually steel and everything. After the, I actually sharpened it a little bit before I put my blue in on it. 
I'm not planning on using it, of course, but um, it's just more of a part of a collection that I have of, of a large collection of World War II knives and a lot of trench art knives and theater knives that people made by hand out of everything that anything that they can make it out of. So that's my review of Birchwood Casey Bluing, and I give it a thumbs up, a 10 for simplicity and quality for the finished product. If you've got a project that you need to have blue and done on your gun or metal, a tool, a knife, anything that's steel, then I would highly recommend that you go buy a Birchwood Casey Bluing Kit and uh, use it to complete your project. Uh, subscribe to GitGo TV and leave a comment if you got any questions about the procedure and how I do this. Um, I may post another video later of the finished product when I finish the handle. Um, in fact, I know I will because I'm going to include a bunch. I'm going to make a video of all the knives that I have in my collection of theater knives. We're going to talk about theater knives and about military issue knives. But this right here will be shown in that video when we when I get it done and I get it uploaded. So subscribe to GitGo TV. Hit the comment button and uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the video. If you got any questions, I'll answer them. If you got any recommendations, anything that I might be able to use, because I can always learn, leave it in the comments section, and I'll always respond back to your comments. So y'all have a good day now, and make sure you subscribe to GitGo TV. Hit the notification button so you know that, that we've uploaded another video, and watch some of our other 300 videos that I've made. Have a good day.